Notion databases allow you to store and display information in a dynamic way, kind of like intelligent file cabinets. You can currently keep your information in a table, list, board, gallery, calendar, or timeline layout. What's more, you can add as many views as you like to your already existing database. In other words, you can configure additional views that will take the very same data you currently have stored and display it differently to give you another perspective. These additional perspectives are what we call database views and are what this video is all about. Before we get started, just know that this tutorial is catered to people who already know how to build a Notion database from scratch, from selecting the layout you want to creating custom properties. If that's not the case for you, we strongly encourage you to view this video first. Here's a tasks database, which we will be using as an example. In this particular case, there are two select properties that allow anyone to specify the priority and the status of the task they're working on. This date property signals the start date of the task, while this other one shows its shape date. These two person properties are dedicated to revealing the engineers and product manager assigned to the task. Properties help you organize, sort, and filter your data based on different pieces of information. Since this table has a property that shows every task status, why not organize all data entries around that in a Kanban board? To add a new view, simply click on the Add View button at the top left of your database. This will automatically open up your new database views menu. Give your view a name and select the database layout you want. In this case, let's select Board. By default, entries appear grouped by the task's priority. But what if we wanted to group them by their status instead? We'll need to correct that by going to the Group By option and specifying that we want this board to group entries by status. A new database view is created. Here, all tasks are plotted in this Kanban board, with each column being a status. Let's manually drag our columns like so to display them in the right order. As the task progresses, folks can easily drag and drop cards to the next phase of development. Now, what if you wanted to preview more content on those cards, such as properties or even images? Any changes you decide to make to your database or database view can be done from the main menu, symbolized by this three-dot icon at the top right. Let's delve into it, shall we? Clicking on Properties will bring you to a list of your database properties. Shown in board refers to the properties that appear on the database cards. Hidden in board points to the properties to hide by default. You can always find them by clicking into the card and looking at the properties section at the top of the page. Click on the closed eye icon next to a hidden property if you want it to show up on the board. Conversely, to hide a property that is currently being shown, click on the eye icon next to it. Clicking here will take you to your list of deleted properties. You can use this section to add a new property to your database. Click on New Property, name your property at the top, click on Type, and select your desired property from the dropdown. Here, you're also given the option to show or hide your newly created property from the database view, as well as duplicate it or delete it. Let's click on the left arrow at the top left to go back to the property section, and on the left arrow again to go back to the main menu. This time, let's go to the Layout section. Here, the blue icon indicates the type of database layout you're currently looking at. This is indeed a board database, as this short sentence also indicates. Note that should you change your mind about the way you want your data displayed, just click on the layout you want, and it will be changed automatically. Card Preview gives you the option to preview images on board and gallery entries. Click on it, and you'll be able to choose whether you want to display your entry's content, for example, text or photos that are stored in the page, the entry's page cover image, or in this case, the documents uploaded in the files property. The card size option allows you to choose the size of your cards, small, large, or medium. If you switch on Fit Image, you'll see your whole images inside their card frames. You now know how to use this Group By option to select the property around which to organize your board entries. Finally, switching on the Color Columns button will add a light color background to each column, the same color you initially picked for your property. In this case, the team chose red for Not Started, yellow for In Progress, and green for Completed. 
Before we move on to filters, sorts, and groups, let's add another view to this database. Click on Add View again, give your new view a name, select the database layout you want, and hit Done. Here's our new list view, which lets you look at data in a streamlined way. Let's have a closer look at the filter option. Filters allow you to only display the information you want to see. To add one to your database, click on Filter, then use this menu to set up the conditions of your filter. Here, we'll filter by status. Then specify that we only want to see tasks whose status is completed. Your filter is now added. If you're in a database view that's shared with other people, the changes you make to filters won't apply to everyone on the team until you click the Save for Everyone button here. Now, what if you wanted to sort your tasks in descending order? You would have to add a sort to your database. To do this, click on Sort and specify that you want to list tasks from most recently shipped to least recently shipped. In the Sort menu, this translates as Ship Date Descending. Super! You may have noticed these Filter and Sort buttons. Clicking on one of these buttons will display the sorts and filters that are currently applied to this view, and they will show up in blue at the top left of the database view. You can also add, delete, or edit filters or sorts from there. Next, let's have a look at what the Group option does for a table view. Back in the main database menu, we'll select the Group option, then choose, say, the Product Manager property. Immediately, the list will be separated into smaller lists, one for each product manager, allowing anyone to see what they have worked on in the past. Now, this Tasks database could use a calendar view. Again, let's hit Add View, give it a name, and choose Calendar. Since we have more than one date property, we'll need to go to this dropdown and select the date property around which we wish to organize our entries. Great! Remember that you can decide to preview as little or as many properties you want on every database card. The last view we'll add is a timeline view. Just like a calendar view, you'll be summoned to select the date property around which to organize your entries. However, what if you wanted to show both dates? You can do this by switching on the Separate Start and End Dates option, and use the following dropdowns to signal which property is the start date and which property is the end date. Timeline views also give you the option of showing your data entries as a table at the left-hand side. Plus, you can decide the time frame in which you want your data displayed, from hours to quarters or years. To learn more about timeline databases, go here. This is what a database with multiple views looks like in Notion. Note that you can easily switch between them by clicking on their tabs. Aside from adding or deleting properties, filters, sorts, and groups, your database menu also enables you to lock your database to prevent from accidental changes by other team members. You can also copy the link to a particular view, duplicate the view, or delete the view. Remember that a Notion database not only allows you to view and move your data entries around seamlessly, you can also treat it as a space to collaborate and get work done. Each card is in fact a page in itself, one that you can use to work, iterate, and gather feedback on whatever task is at hand. Now, what if your entire organization shared the same database to store, say, meeting notes? This is actually something we recommend you do, because it allows you to standardize documents for everyone and foster a culture of transparency across the company. This meeting notes database exists as a top-level page in the sidebar. A way to view all of your team's meeting notes in one place is to add a view and filter it this way. But since this database will be used by multiple teams and people, there's the risk that custom views will accumulate and paint a complex picture. Plus, you might want to access your custom views from the comfort of your own team's homepage instead of having to search for them in this top level page. The solution to this is not to create a new database in your team's homepage. Remember, we really believe in the benefit of keeping everything in one place as much as possible. Rather, you could create a view of the same database inside your team page and apply your own filters to it. To do this, place your cursor inside the body of the page, hit the forward slash key, followed by the word list, then type enter. Then you will be given the option to select which list view database you'd like to summon. If you can't find the database right away, look it up in the search bar and click on it. Wonderful. Our meeting notes database is now available in its entirety from this page. 
First, notice that the views present in the original database are no longer here. The menu to the right gives you the chance to copy those views, but if you don't wish to, you can really start from scratch here. You can name your new view and click here if you wish to hide your database's title. And hit Done. The first thing to do in this case is to add a filter to only show notes for meetings held within the engineering team. Then you can make up your mind on the properties you want to show, or whether you want to sort your meetings in ascending or descending order. To add another view, click on Add View and select your data source again, or select a different data source to pull in relevant information from anywhere in your workspace. For example, combine the product roadmap and meeting notes into one tabular block. Then, just as you've been managing all of your other views, you can go to the database menu to pick your layout. And use the database menu to customize your new view. Pretty neat, don't you think? Now, something to keep in mind. While the views you create and delete will not affect the views on the original database, the changes you make to the actual content or properties of that database will. In other words, if you add engineering meeting notes from here, those will also be available in the original meeting notes page and in any other place where this database is being featured. On the other hand, if you decide to delete a property, it will also be deleted everywhere. And that was Notion database views for you. This video only covered a tiny fraction of the things you can achieve with these dynamic pages. Have a look at our template gallery for wonderful and inspiring databases created and used by our community and duplicate your favorite setups into your own workspace. We can't wait to hear about the great things you too will achieve with our tool. Music